Hey everyone, this is going to be a yoga to de-stress sequence. So come onto your backs. Take your feet hip distance, knees are bent. And then bring both hands to your stomach. Close your eyes, take a deep breath in through your nose. And exhale fully through your mouth. And as you do that, notice that your body gets heavier and you begin to feel a little bit more relaxed. At the very end of that exhale, take another deep breath in through your nose. Fill your lungs up with as much air as you possibly can. When you can't take any more air in, take one last sip. And then exhale fully through your mouth. Feeling yourself more grounded, feeling your thoughts clear away. Exhale fully, 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 fully. When you think you can't exhale any more air, let go of just a little bit more. And then take a deep breath in through your nose. Fill your lungs up with so much air that you feel it in your chest and your shoulders. And then exhale fully through your mouth. Letting your eyes sink deeper into the sockets. Letting all the thoughts totally clear. And then close your mouth, but part your teeth. And bring your attention to your hands. Feel the weight of your hands on your stomach. And focus on your exhales. Without changing your breath, just focus on your exhales. Make a commitment that for this entire practice, you'll let go of whatever it is that you're dealing with in your life. And you'll stay present while you practice today. On your next inhale, quietly open up your eyes or keep them closed if you want. I'm gonna invite the knees in towards the chest. Take a deep breath in. Tuck your chin slightly so the back of your neck is really long. And then see if you can invite your tailbone to come all the way down to the ground. So it's a really subtle movement. Relax your shoulders down to the mat. And then on your next inhale, we're gonna extend the left leg up to the sky, spread the toes. Pull the right knee into the chest. Spread the right toes, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, press the bottom of the foot up to the sky. And then super slowly with the low back glued to the ground, we're gonna come all the way down with that leg. And on your next inhale, take your left hand to your left hip and press the hip down into the ground, don't let it lift. Now lift the right shin so it feels like it's parallel to the ground keeping the low back glued to the ground, open up the right leg. If the left hip starts to lift, just press your left hand into the hip. Beginners stay here. You're a little bit more open. You can reach down with your peace fingers and grab hold of the big toe, and then press out of the bottom of the right foot. As you inhale, come back to center. And as you exhale, invite the left knee into the chest. Interlace your fingers, keeping the right leg extended. Spread the toes. Pull the left knee into the chest. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, press the bottom of the right foot up to the sky. And super slowly, with the low back glued to the ground, come all the way down with the right leg. On your next inhale, take the right hand to the right hip. Press the hand into the hip, then lift the left shin so it feels like it's parallel to the floor. Open up to the left, and if the right hip starts to lift, just press your hand into the hip. 
Beginner, stay here. If you're a little bit more open, take your peace fingers and grab hold of the big toe. Just breathe into the inner left thigh. Maintain your connection to your breath, even though you're not really doing so much here. As you inhale, come back to center. And as you exhale, slowly come down with the left leg. On your next inhale, lift your arms up overhead. Point your toes, reach through the fingers get as long as you possibly can. And then a little bit of a rock side to side. Beginning to wake up the body. And on your next inhale, bend your knees. Tuck the chin so the back of the neck is long. Use your core to lift your legs. Bring your hands underneath your knees. Spread the toes, press the big toe mounds together. Take a deep breath in and lift your hips. And as you exhale, rock up to seated. Bend your knees. Bring the hands underneath the feet, press the feet into the hands, tuck the head around the back, and breathe into the space between the shoulder blades. On your next inhale, rise up. We're gonna come onto all fours. Spread the fingers and press evenly into your hands. So a lot of people will collapse into the sides. Try to press evenly here. Curl your toes, knees underneath the hips, wrist elbows and shoulders in one long line. On your next inhale, lift your head, lift your tailbone, and look up. Get as long as you can from your chin to your hips. As you exhale, press the mat away, round your back, lower your head, let it be heavy, no tension in your neck. And then as you inhale, lift the head, lift the tailbone. You can even explore with some movement here, so if you wanna go back and forth before you exhale and round the back. Inhale, lift. Exhale round. I really encourage you to get outside of your comfort zone. Invite a little movement into your practice. Because it kind of keeps the ego in check. And you don't get too hung up on what's right and what's wrong. On your next inhale, curl your toes, lift your hips, downward facing dog. First one of the practice, so make any small movements you need to. Again, just letting yourself move freely. Do what feels good. Don't worry about anything else. When you're ready to come into stillness, find your downward facing dog. And then check in with your alignment. Spread the fingers. Plug in, especially into the thumbs and the first fingers. Try not to collapse into the outside of the wrist. Press the mat away, so notice the difference between this and this. Press your mat away for long armpits. Let your head hang heavy, your gaze is towards your navel. And then invite the heels to come down to the ground, but if they don't get there, no worries. Imagine that your inner thighs are spinning up to the sky. And then on your next inhale, Lift your right leg high, spread the right toes. On your next inhale, step forward with the right foot. And you're gonna spin on the back foot about 45 degrees coming into warrior one. As you come up for warrior one, take a look at the knee. You wanna be able to see your toes when you're in this position. So you don't want your knee to come too far forward. It should never be in front of the ankle. Press into the outer edge of the left foot, 
Then on your next inhale, interlace your fingers. Press your palms up to the sky, look up. Lift your heart as you do this. So try not to sink into the low back. Instead, imagine that you're being lifted up. And then as you exhale, interlace your fingers behind your back. Press your palms together. If that's too much, just grab opposite elbows. Then when you're ready, come forward. Let your head hang heavy. On your next inhale, pick your arms up away from your ears. And as you inhale, rise up to high lunge. So for high lunge, you're gonna have to spin on the back foot so your hips are facing forward. Bring your hands to your heart. Lift your heart, look up. And as you exhale, float just the fingertips down to the ground. And then use your back body strength to step your feet together and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up with a flat back. Look up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Interlace your fingers underneath your chin. Press your elbows together. Inhale, lift your elbows up to the sky. Exhale, press your elbows out in front. Let your head go back. Inhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. Plant your hands. Step or jump back into plank pose. Go through your vinyasa or come right into downward facing dog. Wherever you are, we'll meet in downward facing dog. When you're in downward facing dog, come back to your commitment to stay present, to let go of whatever is going on in your life that is causing you stress. And when those things try to creep into your practice today, just see if you can flick the switch off. Pay no attention, give it no energy. And on your next inhale, lift your left leg, spread the left toes. Super slowly step to the front of the mat. We're gonna spin on the right foot for 45 degrees and rise up for warrior one. Check in with your alignment. You wanna make sure that your left knee is directly above the ankle or slightly behind. Pressing into the outer edge of the right foot, you're really long and strong through the torso. Then interlace your fingers the way that feels weird and press the palms up to the sky. Look up, lift your heart as you do this. Little mini back bend here. Get as long as you can through your ribs, finding space in between your ribs. And then when you're ready, interlace your fingers behind your back the way that feels weird. Press your palms together, grab opposite elbow, elbows if this is too much for you. And as you exhale, come forward, let your head hang heavy. Press into the outer edge of the right foot. Lift your shoulders away from your ears. And on your next inhale, rise up and find high lunge. So you're gonna spin on the back foot. So your hips are facing forward, arms up overhead. On your next inhale, interlace your fingers behind your head. Lift your heart, look up. And when you're ready, float just the fingertips down to the ground and step your feet together. As you exhale, forward fold. As you inhale, rise all the way up with a flat back, arms up overhead. Exhale your hands to your heart. As you inhale, lift your arms, look up. As you exhale, sink your hips, chair pose. Try not to arch your back, tuck your tailbone, squeeze your legs together, and then as you exhale, tip forward into forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, look ahead. If you're really tight in the backs of the legs, your hands may need to come onto your shins, and you'll do a little micro bend in your knees. Then when you're ready, plant your hands, spread your fingers as wide as you can, step or hop back to plank pose. From here, we're gonna roll onto the knife edge of the right foot, lift the left arm, stack the feet. Option to stay here or begin to lift your left leg high, spread the toes. Reach the foot back behind you, coming into wild thing pose. So you push the mat away. You wanna have your shoulder and your wrist not in line. So do not stack your shoulder on top of your wrist. You're gonna push the mat away, which will bring your shoulder away from your wrist. 
when you're ready, come back into side plank. And then come into regular plank. Roll onto the nape edge of the left foot. If you're really close to a wall, you may need to move. So option to stay here, or when you're ready, lift your top leg, spread the toes, bend the knee, lift the hips, lift the heart, let your head, um, let your arm come back behind you, let your head hang heavy, and again, your left shoulder is not stacked on top of your left wrist. When you're ready, come back into side plank, and then find regular plank. And from here, we're gonna lower all the way down onto the stomach. Bring the elbows underneath the shoulders for Sphinx Pose. Lengthen as much as you can through the crown of the head, the neck, upper back, the lower back, down to the toes, Get as long as you possibly can. Take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, come forward. From here, we're gonna open up the arms and Bend the right arm so the hand is underneath the right shoulder. Your left arm is out to your side. And then you're going to bend the right foot and press into your right hand until your right foot comes down onto the ground behind you. Now you're breathing into the front of the right shoulder. On your next inhale, come back to center. We'll do it on the other side. So the left hand is coming underneath the left shoulder. The right arm is out to your side. Right side of the head is down on the ground. Bend the left leg and press into the left hand so much so that you roll up onto the side of the body and the left foot comes down to the ground. As you inhale, come back to center. And as you exhale, stack your forearms, rest your forehead on your arms. On your next inhale, we're gonna bend both knees. Take your knees hip distance. Spread the toes and then reach back and grab hold wherever you can. If you can't grab hold of your feet, you may need to use a strap. You're going to wrap the strap around the middle of your foot, middle of both feet rather, and then grab as close as you, as close as you can to the feet. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, rise up, lift everything up. Try to keep the knees in line with your hips. Breathe into the front body here, the shoulders, the hip flexors. Use your back body strength to lift. And then as you exhale, gently release and find your way slowly into child's pose. Close your eyes as you're here in child's pose. And then if it's okay for your knees, just gently shift your weight from side to side. Just seeing how that feels on the hips. And then come into stillness from the waist down and gently press into your left arm and then into your right arm just to find a little bit more openness in your shoulders and chest area before coming into total stillness. On your next inhale, round forward onto all fours. Curl your toes and lift up for downward facing dog. And 
and then slowly take a walk to the front of the mat. And bend your legs so deeply that you come to sit down. And here we're going to extend the legs and remove the flesh from underneath the sitting bones. Take your feet hip distance. And then reach down and grab hold wherever is comfortable for you. So maybe that's the shins today. Maybe it's over tops of the feet. Wherever you are, take a deep breath in. Get as long as you can through your spine. And then as you exhale, find a little bit of movement, intending to bring the stomach down towards the thighs. And as you do that, you'll feel a good release in your low back and in your hamstrings. Try not to round your back and have your goal be that your head comes down to your knees. Because as you do that, you're stretching then the back and not the legs. You're stretching the upper back and not the hamstrings and your low back, I should say. And if you're breathing fully and you're still not finding very much movement, try not to get frustrated. Just breathe, stay in the moment, and remember that with consistent practice, you will see improvement in your flexibility. On your next inhale, long arms, look ahead. And as you exhale, gently release. Bring your hands back behind you, about eight inches or so. Now keep the feet hip distance and press into the heels of the feet until you lift your hips up off the ground. And then intend for the bottoms of the feet to touch the mat. Let your head go if that's okay for your neck and breathe here. Gently release and come all the way down for Shavasana. We're going to be here for about five minutes. So take your feet mat distance, turn your palms up to the sky. And then before you get too comfortable here, you're going to squeeze your hands together, curl your toes, activate your quads, squeeze everything, lift your arms up a little bit, squeeze your arms in towards your body, squeeze everything, squeeze your face, squeeze your eyes, squeeze everything, 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 and then stop. And let your body totally relax. Go ahead and close your eyes. Let the eyes sink into the sockets. Let your mind remain calm. And then just take one more minute to acknowledge your practice and your commitment to stay present. And know that Shavasana is one of the most challenging poses because when we're quiet, we're not really doing anything, thoughts tend to creep back into your mind. So if that happens, just make a commitment to yourself that when that does happen, you will watch those thoughts go by like there are clouds in the sky, giving them no energy, giving them no attention, not reacting at all, not letting outside stressors have an impact in your life.
On your next inhale, begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. And then slowly make your way over to your right side. Keep your eyes closed, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, sit yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Bring your hands to your heart to acknowledge your practice. And then set an intention for the rest of your day Maybe it's something specific that you want to get done, or maybe it's just that you want to stay present in every moment as it comes, not letting outside factors affect how you feel. Thanks so much for practicing with me today. Namaste.